Hey everybody, it's Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com. Have you ever looked into domain-driven design and thought, wow, this is totally overkill? Well, you're not alone, and I kind of agree, but not for the reasons you might think. I say you're not alone because of this meme that I did a video about that keeps giving. Somebody replied, learning.net DDD, send me back to learning MVC. It's so stressful. I was kind of confused by this, and then somebody was as well saying, what is the connection from DDD to MVC? It's design patterns, I think. And there's the smoking gun. And I kind of had the feeling it was going to happen. Although I thought maybe, hey, it's 2025 and we've gotten past this now. But clearly not. Because a lot of people still think it's about a checklist. A checklist of patterns that you have to apply. Rather than it's simply being a matter of understanding the domain, understanding the business, and modeling it. I'm going to jump into a code sample that's the epitome of why people think this is confusing. But first, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context in fine grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. Tell me you haven't run into this. So I'm using the example of a shipment. We have this update shipment status as a command where we take a shipment ID and what the status is. That probably is invoked from say some MVC controller or endpoint. Then we have this handler that's actually invoked where we pass that command in. What are we doing here? Oh, we have a repository where we're getting out the shipment. Then we call update uh, status and save it. Let's take a look at what the update status does. Almost nothing, <laughs> really just changing the property. Tell me you haven't seen this before. I'll give you another example that you can probably relate to, that you probably run into. Let's say we have a customer aggregate, and it is a the aggregate root, it's a domain entity, and it has relationships to maybe the order history, the addresses associated to a customer. Maybe when you're looking at this aggregate, it also publishes domain events. Well, that's pretty impressive, right? It's using all the DDD lingo, you're looking at this code, it has these relationships, sounds great. Not really, because it's not capturing any business logic, any behavior at all. What it's really doing is just capturing structure of data. That's it. Domain driven design is not about design patterns, but a lot of people think so. Hence, at the very beginning, why people think it's complicated, because they think they have a checklist of all these patterns like entities, aggregates, value objects, uh, repositories, shared kernel, all these things that they read about thinking, hey, I need all this stuff to apply DDD. And guess what? I probably aren't in a, I'm not in a domain that actually warrants it potentially. That's why it seems complicated. Like my code example, that needed none of those patterns. It's not about design patterns. It's about the language you're using within that domain, the workflows involved, and the business logic and the domain rules. Now, what I'm about to say may sound ridiculous, but just take a step back for a second. Domain-driven design, not pattern-driven design, not aggregate repository-driven design, domain-driven design. If I were just say the title, what do you think that you would actually be focusing on then? Probably the domain. Now, to be fair, I think a lot of the content published around DDD actually nowadays is better. It doesn't so much focus purely on the tactical. It also talks about the strategic of what I'm talking about, of bounded context, ubiquitous language, subdomains, context maps, all these things. They also talk about the tactical, which people just tend to latch on about. They see entities, aggregates, value objects, all these other things, and just want to disregard everything else and just focus on the patterns. But where DDD really shines, in my opinion, is around complexity of a domain, specifically around workflows. And I'll give you a really simple example. In the kind of the situation of a shipment, there's a whole workflow and life cycle that a shipment might go through. There's a business process there. The order is dispatched. Once that's dispatched, maybe the truck vehicle that's doing that pickup arrives at the shipper where it's actually being picked up. That freight is then loaded onto the vehicle. It departs with the arrival of the shipper. It then arrives at the Constantinia where the delivery is happening. Then the unloader do the delivery. There's kind of a workflow, and I'm simplifying this greatly, but you can think about if you had multiple ship ups, shipments for multiple different pickups with multiple different deliveries where things are split, where part of the freight goes here, part of the freight goes there, it can get very, very complicated. But there's a life cycle, there's a workflow. This is where DDD shines. And you'll notice in that workflow, I was using language that's very domain specific that anybody in it would actually understand. 
It wasn't a update shipment like my initial code example where I was just setting a status. It was very specific about the events and actions that actually occurred. And that's what DDD is for, is capturing those decisions, those transitions, the rules. So if I'm using something like an aggregate, that's what I'm using it for. I have a shipment here where I have, I'm basically making sure it's always in a valid state because just like I was illustrating, there's kind of a state transition that it has to go through. So I'm doing all that logic. I'm checking things like if I want to do an arrive at a particular stop, that none of the other stops before it are not departed. If there's anything in that way, when I'm, I'm trying to arrive at a stop that's not valid yet, same thing when I do the pickup. I have logic around, oh, is that actually the stop that you should be doing the depart from, the pickup that you're actually leaving? Is there any other ones before that are not in that state? We're making sure we're kind of always in a valid state. You can think of any example that you have in a complex domain, I'm simplifying this greatly, but to illustrate, where you have a ton of logic related to workflow given the state that you're in, making sure you're always in a valid state. So for me, I put a lot of value in the strategic aspect of domain driven design, of using the language, capturing that in code. What does that mean, capturing it in code? It is that tactical aspect. It is using those patterns where they're valuable. It doesn't mean you exactly have to use them. They're a means to an end. So there is value in the patterns that people often describe in domain driven design. There absolutely is value there. But again, they're really a means to an end. They're not necessarily your starting point. And I think that's why people think DDD is complicated is because they're starting from that tactical aspect and trying to apply that to parts of their system or their system in general that doesn't require it at all. This is very typical where you have, in my example, a shipment might be very complicated, but there's other parts of your system that are fairly simple that are more there to support that complexity that's within a shipment. There's things like kind of uh, customer management, CRM type things. That might be very basic and very simple. Do they need all these tactical patterns? No, could you be doing something like still being explicit about the language and how you're describing aspects of that, but it's just very CRUD, create, read, update, delete, and it really is just kind of data driven at that point around structures. And there's really no kind of behavior or workflows to deal with? Absolutely. So do I need all these patterns? No. So in my original example here of my shipment and updating a shipment status, does that make sense in my system dealing with a shipment? Probably not. But maybe if I'm building a system that really is just about capturing the status and that's it, where's the workflow live? There isn't any. Maybe if there is some, but it's in a user's head and we're not gonna capture it in our software. Maybe that's fine. If that's the case and all we really do is have CRUD, why are we going to the lengths of having a command, a handler, a repository, a domain entity that's not really, it's really just a data bucket with a method to set a property on it. I don't need to go through all these links. This isn't really doing DDD, this is just trying to apply some patterns. The tactical patterns will make sense and you can use them in places where they actually solve the problem that you have and that will happen when you understand the domain. It can't be the other way around. So it's not the tactical patterns are bad, they're just the wrong starting point. So start talking to people within the domain, modeling workflows and using the business's language. Then you can reach for things like entities and value objects. And get in the comments and let me know about those horror stories where you were either using domain to design or were in a project that was using it and it was totally inappropriate, as well as the success where it worked out great and it was really valuable in that particular context. Get in the comments and let me know so others can kind of feel out what works, what doesn't work. And if you appreciate these videos, you wanna support my channel, you can do so by joining it. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.